Hello friends, today I am going to discuss about types of grounding. In our previous video, I discussed already about system grounding and equipment grounding. Uh, in this particular topic, I am going to talk about a different method of connecting the system grounding. Let us see. These are the types of grounding which is used in electrical power system. There are ungrounded system, there are solidly grounded system and resistance grounded system in that we have two uh, types, low resistance grounding, high resistance grounding. We have reactance grounded system and resonant grounded system. Today topic we are going to discuss about ungrounded system. So we are going to see what is ungrounded system, where these ungrounded systems are used and during faulty condition how the system behaves, how the fault current is identified. Okay, what are the equipments or methods used to find out the faulty conditions? So, these are the things we are going to see in this particular video. Let us start now. So, what is ungrounded system? So, the system in which neutral of transformer or generator are not connected to the ground. So, what is the problem? If you not connect this neutral point of a transformer or a generator to the ground, what is going to happen? Let us see, there is a lightning strike there is a surge voltage because of that. Where this surge voltage will go? If you have the system grounding, what happens? This surge current will flow through the system grounding to the earth. Now, this system does not have any ground from the neutral point. So, the high voltage which is induced in the power system because of a lightning or it is because of the surges, the switching surges it cannot go away from the system. So, this is a big problem of this ungrounded system. Okay. So, though there is a no physical grounding, it is capacitively coupled. How it is capacitively coupled? You know uh, what is a capacitor? Capacitor is having a two plates and there is a dielectric medium. So, here the conductors of this power system is acting as one plate of the capacitor. And the ground itself acting as a or the earth itself acting as a another plate of a capacitor. The air in between these two is going to act as a dielectric medium. So, if the distance between these two plates is more, that means the dielectric medium value will be very high. The conductivity between these two plates is going to be very, very high. And also the potential what you apply in this conductors also is going to determine how much conductivity is there between this conductor and the earth. Okay. So, these systems are also called as floating system. Where we are going to use this floating systems? You see here in the hospitals intensive care, the power supply should be uninterrupted and uh, signal circuits, emergency backup systems. So, these areas you, there is a fault, but compared to this fault, the emergency or the importance of the other work what is happening there is more. So, they give uh, you know the little less preference for the fault. So, there is a system to find out the fault. If it is not major, it is let to go for certain amount of time until the alternate so, uh, source of power is found out and the uh, switch over is taking place. Until then, the system should not turn off by itself. So, this is the uh, main purpose of this ungrounded system. So, let us see how it is being achieved. So, let us see this uh, picture where we have a transformer, primary and secondary both are connected in delta uh, type and there is no grounding happens between the transformer and to the earth. So, there is no ground here. And in the load side, we have the equipment grounding. You can see there is a equipment grounding, but there is no still uh, system grounding available in the load side as well. When there is a fault condition, you can see there is a fault taken place between this coil and the machine body. So, the current would start flowing through this path. As shown in this red dotted line, the current would flow through this path. So, here uh, this path could be either because of a small metal piece or it could be because of a, a, a lizard kind of insects or it could be because of water. Okay. So, the path is take connected between these two and the resistance of this will be taken into consideration 
and the resistance of this conductor between the equipment and the earth the resistance of this conductor and the resistance of the coupling here between the earth and the line conductors so these three resistance together is forming the resistance offered to the leakage current or a fault current so these two resistance are negligible in value these are small value but the resistance from this point from the earth to the line conductor is going to be high so because of this high resistance the leakage current or the fault current is going to be very less so when the fault current is very less these devices could not able to trip so this is the another big problem of this ungrounded system so there is a fault but the fault could not be identified by these circuit breakers okay so now let us see the values so this is a formula used for finding out the fault current so this is the phase voltage and this is the resistance of the conductor or the path which is formed here and the resistance of the conductor which is connecting the equipment and the earth is shown here and the resistance of this one so how the earth and the conductor is connected so this resistance is going to be very high for example the 0.1 ohm resistance is taken for this first one and second one 0.2 and the capacitive coupling resistance is 1 mega ohms and the leakage current for this particular system is 0.27 milliampere it is very small to find and uh, to uh, detect through the circuit breakers so we must have a special equipment to find out this fault current and then we have to rectify the fault but you, you can say the fault current is very less so how it is going to affect us so this current let it go what is the problem but what happens when human comes in contact so this current uh, the current uh, which is going to the human will not be like that because the resistance here is in mega ohms but the human when he is come in contact he, he will have the lesser resistance so the path through the human will have more current okay until otherwise it is not identified you have less current but when when the human comes in contact uh, with the machine with the faulty machine so the current fault current will be very very high and which would uh, kill him or which would uh, uh, injure him with a uh, severe problems so we have to remove the problem or we have to remove the fault so in the olden days they used the method of finding the fault uh, like a three lamp method where they were connected the lamp between the conductors and the earth so when we have the potential so between the line and the earth balanced so all the three lamps are glowing in a same brightness until the fault happens all the three lamps glows in a same brightness and when the fault happens the faulty line the potential goes down the voltage goes down or the voltage is dropped and here these two lines the voltage will rise because there is no fault but because of this faulty condition these two voltages will rise and this voltage will go drop so because of this voltage drop this light become dull or it is dim compared to these two lights so based on that i can able to find out this particular uh, line is having a problem okay so this is the old method nowadays they don't use this just to understand how they find the fault in olden days i just put this picture here and uh, the device which they are using nowadays for finding out the fault is imd okay insulation monitoring device so what they do actually they connect this imd with uh, all the three phases or the three lines and they pass a small signal to these lines every time there is a small value of potential is applied to this and since there is no path provided so here when until the leakage happens there is no path provided by the signal say there is no path provided for the signal which is applied from the imd so there is no written path for the current or the signal which i apply from the imd so that means the resistance is very high the, uh, the resistance is high that means the system doesn't have any insulation failure or there is no leakage when there is a leakage like this what happens the signal whatever i give here so it will go to this and it will come back through this leakage path and it will return back to the imd like this so when it is coming back to the imd so that means uh, the signal is finding the path that that means there is a leakage and the signal strength 
will be calculated and based on the signal what is received in the IMD in a return path. So, based on that the analysis will be done and if the value is considerably less, so it gives only the indication if the value is high that means it will give the signal to the tripping mechanism. So, this is how the ground fault is identified in the ungrounded system. Hope it is clear and uh, uh, well understood. Uh, in the next video, I am going to talk about a solidly grounded system and then later we will discuss about resistive grounded system and then reactance grounded system. Thank you, thank you for watching.